Hi all, I have another amazing Leela chess game to show you. So again, Stockfish 7. Leela was playing on a GTX 1060 graphics card. Stockfish on a 2.80 GHz full CPU setup. This game is courtesy of David Grosvenor. One minute for 40 moves, very fast time control. E4 from Stockfish 7. We see C5, the Sicilian defense, Knight F3, E6. D4, C takes, Knight takes. And this is the end of the book. So we're using the engines to explore different book lines, and it's very, very interesting what results, the insights. And I believe this is within the philosophy of Demis Asapis to use AI to explore and understand new concepts. So if we can control the openings, we can get different kind of pawn structures. Now here, this pawn structure is good for white to get a pawn storm potentially. It's a Schaveningen uh, center here, and often, the very dangerous care style attacks with g4 g5 later are very dangerous to play playing black so let's see how Lila handles this she doesn't immediately castle here bishop d7 is played the usual book move seems to be knight c6 and this is a kind of even position and well-known classical position so bishop d7 slightly rarer but uh, not there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it i believe knight c6 Knight b3, and now b5, so again not castling, trying to get b5 in before it's clamped down on, perhaps. a3, now black castles, bishop f3, rook b8, and now g4. So we're going to see in this game how Leela can handle a pawn storm. Usually she's the one doing the pawn storms. So this is a fascinating change of style now. How will Leela gain some counterplay here? Well, a5 playing on the queen side, it seems logical g5 the knight goes to e8 now this is interesting already there's not too many squares for the knight in fact it's the only square and go to c7 though later h4 knight c7 which it does now to try and connect back the heavy pieces on the back rank a4 b4 and now a very aggressive move from stockfish knight d5 this might actually be technically one of the uh, the best moves an alternative is knight e2 nothing's dropping off there but knight d5 is an interesting critical test of black's position. Leela took here, e takes, and there's nowhere for this knight to go. In fact, Leela countersacks, knight takes d5, which gives white uh, a very strong looking bishop in the center. But also there's this pawn which seems a bit weak here on d6. Now, here actually, we see the move queen c8. And this gives that d8 square for the bishop in advance of a pawn avalanche with f5, f6. In fact, it doesn't discourage f5. f5 is played here because tactically c6 is loose. This can't be taken because of c6 being an issue. Uh, so like bishop takes c6, for example, and then rook takes f5. Uh, so that's, it's really to do with the parking space for the bishop. And if you think about f5, Conventionally, we want to try and tap into the e5 square when we're playing against the pawn storm, trying to get the key squares. But this move also, by moving the queen there, having the bishop come back potentially on this diagonal or this diagonal, these two key diagonals uh, could be more readily available when white is pushing all these pawns. So g6 is actually played in this position to try and encourage positively encourage closing up the attack actually with f6 so that's a very interesting tactical decision here as well uh, decision here. because otherwise g6 is also is also a dangerous possibility with that big bishop on d5 so g6 stops g6 from white and encourages f6 so the bishop uses d8 now we have rook f4 rook e8 actually in a way, if black can keep this airtight, it's not too much to worry about in theory. It's it's keeping it airtight and not opening up key lines. Uh, bishop f2, knight e5, so the knight's using that nice e5 square. Queen e2. And now, uh, potentially white has h5 all the time. Leela actually plays h5 herself. So cutting that out, and also a peg for the g4 square, potentially. Now, white doesn't take this pawn because maybe king h7 this position with bishop b6 and queen c7 this is nothing it seems to fear here i can even take that pawn there as an example 
It seems as though this position isn't too uh, scary. So when he actually just left that pawn there after h5, just queen d1. We have bishop c6. Bishop takes, queen takes, knight d4. Now here things get a bit scary. This knight which wasn't doing anything on b3 is all of a sudden a very dangerous piece. White has concocted a dangerous attacking scheme here. Because after queen d7, a very dangerous looking attacking move is played by Stockfish. Can you guess? Yeah, the sleepy knight has turned into an aggressive piece now. Knight f5, it was sleeping on b3, now knight f5. Trying to break down Black's fortress. Black's king safety. Now if takes, this would be a bad idea. I'll give you an example. Queen takes with an idea of queen h6 simply to mate on g7. So for example, this is just fatal for black just losing all the pieces. The only way to defend this, it seems, would be bishop e7 to be ready with bishop f8. Uh, but white's at least okay here after just taking and then bishop d4. This is just okay for white. It should be an even position. But Lever, Lever bypasses all this excitement of taking the knight and plays d5. This is very, very interesting stuff. It kind of liberates black's position subtly, this move. Uh, we have knight e3. If knight h6 check here, king f8 is fatal for black because a bishop c5 check and having to give up a piece but that no no concern really with that because basically here king h7 and here black should be fine there black actually has the edge in that position that that d5 liberating this diagonal basically so trying to exploit the dark squares it's very important to, to push that d5 point it seems that that gives black's clawing uh her way back into the game uh so Let's have a look. So after this d5, so this diagonal and this diagonal are more, more available. We have knight e3. And now the tactical d4. This pawn is immune here. If rook takes d4, black, can you see, has a tactic available. Queen takes because of knight f3 check, collecting the queen after. Now d4 is very interesting because after knight f5, uh, it seems here, this this is really interesting now, b3 played in this position. <clears throat> so there's a lot of pressure on the white position here, uh, a lot of uh, things going on. White played knight h6 check. On c takes, just to show you the, this position, it's interesting here d3 behind the scenes because uh, as an example, this this is an example rook b4, and then not even taking on b4. This just to get the queen here and the knight. <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> the queen here and the knight on f3 would be a great setup. So, for example, rook b5, knight f3. This is this is a crushing setup here uh, with rook e2 check just crashing through. So that that would be like the dream position. So this is getting really uh, quite dangerous. Uh, so we have actually knight h6 check, king h7, queen takes d4, queen h3, c4. Now here, knight f3 check, although tempting, isn't so great here after taking. And here... Uh, Although black has the possibility of bishop b6, white can play queen d7 here, creating immediate problems for black. So for example here, knight takes, this is actually tactical and reasonable for white, this check. And this actually gets an even position, evenly balanced technically. So uh, basically, this knight f3 is not that attractive. So bishop c7 still going on with trying to get onto those dark squares. So this is symbolic of dark square counterplay. And yeah, we have queen d5 still going to attack f7. That's kicked. And now here, uh, queen d3 is played. Rook f1. 
it's actually a very difficult position here for white white's a bit passive there's potential for putting pressure on the second rank the seventh rank from leader's perspective queen b7 rook d7 c5 rook b8 kicking the queen again back queen takes b2 this is very desperate now this is a very dangerous pass pawn on the queen side the knight's stranded over here bishop e3 queen c3 queen e4 and this is actually losing material for white this is a very dangerous position because of b2 b1 this is just losing actually to rook b4 tactically because the queen's going to hold on to e3 so rook c1 this is actually just absolutely losing for white because of queen takes c1 check bishop uh, rook takes here and then the bishop on c1 is dropping off the check the bishop drops so a fantastic counter-attack from black after b2 even the rooks dropping now after that Queen's game adjudicated as a win here of course for black it's so much uh, material up for Leela by this stage so this is a very interesting counter-attacking game against the pawn storm they say attack is the best form of defense and philosophically if you think about that I have thought about that philosophically it's because the roots the roots if you tackle a problem from its roots the roots of being attacked is the the opponent's position, the opponent's attacking pieces. If you continually just passively defend without a counterattack, you're not addressing the root problem. So Leela here really addressed the root causes of the attack, went on the counterattack on the juicy dark squares that emerged. The central liberation of that pawn actually cleared, in a way, this fifth rank for things like Rook before to try and infiltrate on the, even the light squares with Queen Entry and Knight F3. So great uh, dynamic counterplay was created by Leela in this game and not indulging white to open up lines or accept pieces when it wasn't forced to accept uh, sacrificial pieces which would have basically at least led to equality for white or even even an advantage so Leela stayed out of trouble kept the position locked down closed as one would a good defensive player as well but on the counter-attack to try and address the roots of the problem counter-attacking later was really quite ferocious and creating a pass pawn on the queen side as well combining things as well king safety and a pass pawn so i hope you got something from that comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much